Good morning, everyone. My name is Fan Pata Barisit. Today, I'll present to you negative preference and rural utilitarianism. For today's presentation, I will start by explaining the concepts of the three versions of utilitarianism, then discuss a little bit more about their applications in the real world business context. And after the presentation, there will be a Q&A session. Negative utilitarianism is a theory coined by Karl Popper. It differs from classical utilitarianism as the focus to be on the minimization of negative well-being rather than the maximization of pleasure. Popper's version of utilitarianism comes with the claim that when we are free from pain, we enter into a state of perfect mental peace. An example of this type of utilitarianism it's, it's when we may take the medicine to reduce the pain when we have a headache, or the way we wear the seat belts to help prevent serious injury when diving. The second version is preference utilitarianism, which has R.M. Pear and Peter Singer as the prominent representatives. It talks about the ultimate focus on actions that would, be, that would best satisfy people's interests and preferences. This reflects the point Point that every person's perspective of satisfaction is unique. Since what is right solely depends on the preferences of each person, there are no criteria indicating which preference is good or which is bad. Also, it is stated that the desired preferences can also be irrational sometimes. Besides, another issue that could happen is the contradiction in the preferences, whether it's between individuals or between the preferences of one individual. This leads to the point where we have to weigh the appropriateness of the desired utility, which can be done through several means. For example, if you are hesitating about what to buy between a new mobile phone, as the current one that you're using is broken, and the other thing is a new computer which contains many brand new interesting features that you are interested in. In this case, you may decide by comparing what is more necessary according to your current condition, and the answer would be a new mobile phone. Next is the rule utilitarianism. It is a moral theory outlined by Richard Brandt and Brad Hooger. So basically the concept is that there are moral codes that act as a guideline on how to behave in a given situations. For example, a traffic light tells a driver what to do, whether to go through to drive slower and prepare to stop or stop and wait for the light to turn green again. If the driver continues driving during the red light, his action is considered wrong. The reason behind this is the argument saying that one's action cannot evaluate the appropriateness or correctness of things under ongoing circumstances. So the rules and regulations take place to specify exactly what is needed to be done. However, it should be noted that sometimes rules can contradict people's common sense as well. In a business context, all three aspects could be applied in various ways. To give an example, negative utilitarianism could be the actions of preventing business risks and laws. Preference utilitarianism could be the means to achieve company goals and attract stakeholder interests. And for the rule utilitarianism, it could be the company's operations that abide by the law or even the rules and regulation to ensure employee safety, which in this case, it will link to the negative utilitarianism as well. For further discussion, I would like to mention some practices from the company Pfizer. Pfizer is an American multinational pharmaceutical company with the mission to be the world's most valued company to patients. It is the company's aim to invent breakthroughs that can deal with health problems. For example, during the spread of COVID-19, Pfizer developed a vaccine to serve the reduction of the effects of the virus and boost people's immune response. Here we can notice the negative utilitarianism of Pfizer in the act of suffering reduction. For preference utilitarianism, Pfizer engages with its stakeholder in making the decision regarding the innovation that would base contribute to society and then continually cooperate for further development as well. Lastly, for rural utilitarianism, the company strongly emphasizes integrity in its business and improvements. Pfizer also complies with the U.S. Foreign Corrupt Practices Act and, and international anti-bribery and anti-corruption laws. This is to pro prohibit all forms of corruption within the organization. Now we have come to the end of the presentation and next will be the Q&A session.